I'm back with round two of my Dollar Tree DIYs for Christmas. I'm so excited to share with you what I created and give you some inspiration for the holiday season, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor, tips, tricks, and tutorials around all things DIY. So if that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. All the supplies I'm using today, as well as any free downloads I mentioned, will be available down in the description box. And without further ado, let's get crafting. Up first are these super quick and easy magnets that you can customize in a ton of different ways. So the first thing that I did was print out some printables. These are adapted from my free Christmas printables that I did in my last video. You can download all of that over on my blog. The link will be in the description. I'm printing these to four by four inch squares, but you could do these really whatever size you want. Then I just took my scissors and cut them out. They were easy shapes to cut. If you have longer lines, you need to be straight. You can use a slide cutter or whatever you have. The next step is to make those printables a little bit more firm. So I'm taking some scrap Dollar Tree foam board, tracing carefully around the outside of my square, and then taking my Arteza hobby knife to cut and make a really clean edge along the foam board. Then to adhere my printable, I just took a good old Elmer's glue stick, made sure the whole piece of foam board was covered, and then took my square and made sure it was all pushed down on the top. Now, because I'm gonna put these magnets in my kitchen, I wanted to make sure that they were essentially laminated or protected, so I'm using this Dollar Tree packing tape to do so. In my last video, I used Avery self-laminating sheets, which you can also do, but this is a lot cheaper and it works just the same. Take a piece of tape that is slightly wider than your magnet, and here, because of the height of it, I had to do two pieces of tape. I made sure to line up the seam as closely as I could, and then I wrapped the tape around the back. Then it is protected from any of the elements in your kitchen, which is really nice. Then I'm taking these magnetic buttons that I got from Walmart, but Dollar Tree sells these in the Crafter Square section, sticking them on the back. And then you've got some super cute magnets that you could use for a variety of different things. I'm gonna put them on my fridge and you don't have to use printables. You could also use different things that Dollar Tree has like these felt cutouts or these ornaments. This Santa just came in a pack of four so I just added some hot glue to the adhesive on the magnet, glued that on the back. And then for this ornament, I just cut off the ribbon and removed the little eyelet hook and added some hot glue and stuck that magnet on the back. These would also make really great markers for metal advent calendars. There's a ton of different options and I really like that magnets are renter friendly. You could bring these to the office if you're back working there to give yourself a little bit of Christmas cheer in that space. You could also use a variety of different items. You don't have to use printables. You could use Dollar Tree wrapping paper, Dollar Tree card, bags if they've got really cute little images. If you've been able to find those calendars, you could use those images. For this next project, I wanted to make something where I could display photos or little printables for the holidays. So I grabbed one of these Dollar Tree little crates and I stained the entire thing, including the inside with dark walnut. And then when it was dry, I used this really cute bag that I also found at Dollar Tree. It says fa -la, la la on it in a bunch of different fonts. I trimmed the bag and then peeled off the handle really carefully so that I could get a piece that didn't have a crease in it. And then I put a decent amount of Mod Podge onto the box so that I could apply it. Once that was dry to make it into a photo frame, I grabbed some of these teeny little clothespins from Crafter Square in Dollar Tree, added some super glue gel to it to have it stick, put it in the center of the top of my frame, and then wrapped the bottom with some red and white baker's twine. Now Dollar Tree does sell little spools in a three pack with other colors, but I like to order my baker's twine off Amazon. You get a lot more bang for your buck. I will link my favorite down below. Now you can add Christmas cards or a ton of different things, but I like to add photos. It fits a four by six really well. This is a throwback of Thin from last year, so I just wanted to use it for illustration purposes, but this would be great for photos with Santa or your Christmas Eve picture, whatever you have, and the Baker's Twine makes it really holiday friendly. You could also go neutral with this if you wanna use it year round and maybe just tie some Baker's Twine on the top. I made this in a mystery box video a few months ago, so I will link that video if you want to see how to make it just general. How stinking cute is this little gingerbread man? He was super easy to put together and he looks like you bought him from a store and didn't make him. So I grabbed two of these create your own ornaments with little cutouts of a gingerbread man. If you want to buy the felt and cut it yourself, you could absolutely do that as well. 
Then I lined up my two pieces and started by tracing from the neck on one side around the arms and you just want to get as close to the edge as you can so then that way you're creating a faux seam to start out with. I ended up going around the entire bottom of my gingerbread man, but I left from the neck to the top of the head open. That's gonna help when it comes to stuffing. Then I just grabbed some extra polyfill from an old pillow, but if you wanna make this fully Dollar Tree, just grab some cotton balls or some of that fluff you can put into gifts. Nobody's gonna be laying on this pillow, so it doesn't have to be anything too intense. I used my hand to make sure that I got it into both legs and the arms so that they puffed up nicely and gave them a 3D look. Once the bottom was fully stuffed, I repeated the same step with sealing the top of the head, stuffed that, and then made sure the entire gingerbread man was sealed. Then to give it the cute hand sewn look, I used a blanket stitch. So I took some yarn, tied a knot at the end and strung the other end with a six inch dowel needle. I will link down below the options that I like. I really like doing blanket stitches because it looks like you tried really hard and it's pretty easy. So you're gonna start by going up from the bottom so that that little knot you just made catches and then loop around a second time. Like you're just gonna stitch around. But then instead of pulling it all the way through, you're gonna loop back through that first one so that it catches. That's how you start your blanket stitch. Then you're gonna loop it around again. And before you pull it all the way through, grab that little extra slack loop here like I'm doing. And you're gonna take your needle and go backwards through that hole. That's how you're going to create your stitch plus the border around the outside. So you're gonna loop it through and before you pull it all the way through, go back through the loop. If you have questions on a blanket stitch, I will link a tutorial down below that I use to learn how to do it. But once you get doing it, you will be hooked and wanna put it on all your pillows, at least that's how I was. So then I continued that all the way around the outside. I just sat down and watched a Netflix show and went through and stitched all around the outside. Once I was done stitching, I just tied off the ends, probably a triple knot, and then I used the felt that came with the gingerbread man to finish him off. I used the eyes and the mouth that came with the kit, and then I took the little red circles and trimmed them down just a little bit. They were a little too big originally, then I also took the green scalloping and used it as a template to cut out some white because I didn't want the green. It just didn't go with the vibe I wanted. I glued everything on as well as adding three additional circles for buttons and my cute little guy was done. I think he turned out so cute. You could put this on a shelf just as decor, but I plan to either put it in Finn's room or put it on our couch as just an additional pillow. It looks really cute with just some festive pillows. Here I've got red and black buffalo check as well as just a $5 white pillow that I got from Five Below. He's so fun and festive and no one would guess he was under five bucks to make. I'm not usually a big wreath person. However, I made some for fall and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to make a, another one that was kind of ski lodge theme. So first for this, I grabbed a chipboard snowflake as well as some of these larger ornaments. You can grab whatever type of snowflake you want or that is available at your Dollar Tree. I went through and filled any holes I needed to and then spray painted them all white. The white helped here making these ornaments pop as well as holding in all the glitter and then here I spray painted because it was just much quicker. I also wanted to use one of these skates but I'm not sure who approved the brown skate on this ornament. It is not my vibe at all. I think it's weird that it's brown so I just took some chalk paint and painted it gray and we were all good to go. The impetus for this wreath was this black and white buffalo check mesh that I saw. They also had red and black but I wanted to make something I could use through Christmas into the winter season. I'm just going through and cutting approximately like seven inch strips. I did not measure it. I just wanted it to be able to go into a little wrap like you're seeing here. And then I grabbed three of them, laid them over the top, and then took a black pipe cleaner to wrap it around. It's not rocket science. It doesn't have to look a certain way. You're just looking for a messy cluster. Then to attach it to my wreath form, which I'm using a square one, but you can use whichever one you've got. This was just in my stash and I wanted to use it. I took my little legs of my pipe cleaner and wrapped it around the outermost ring. 
I'm just twisting the pipe cleaner like you would a bread tie and I'm hooking them and pushing them together. As you can see, it comes together really easily and I ended up needing to cut and use six containers of the mesh. Then I just took some white twine that I had from Dollar Tree on hand because I wanted to hook these on while also kind of having it be hidden. So I just took it and wove it through the innermost part of the snowflakes and then just tied them on through to the back. You can't really see the white because it blends in with both the mesh and the snowflakes and it allowed me to place things exactly where I wanted it. Also to cover the string on the big snowflake, I just took some glue and stuck on one of my spray painted ones. After I had snowflakes where I wanted them, I also threw in a couple of the wood ornaments that Dollar Tree sells because I had some extra left over from a project. And then I took some more of that white twine to tie on my finished little ornament. I ended up also popping off the top hanger as well as any greenery because this wreath didn't have any greenery and it seemed random to me. The final step was to take a Dollar Tree little metal hanger, hang it over my door and display it. I really like the kind of controlled messy aspect of mesh wreaths. I don't have a ton of them, but when I saw this ornament in the store, I had an idea for kind of this ski lodge vibes. And you guys need to let me know down in the comments, are you big wreath people? Do you want me to do more wreaths? Cause I've been actually enjoying it. So let me know if I should keep doing wreaths. In my last Dollar Tree DIY video, I shared these peppermint little sticks and so many of you asked about them and how I made them, so I wanted to share them in this video. This idea actually came from a larger version that Shannon at the Daily DIYer did as part of our Christmas in July collab, so I will link that video down below. But I decided to use my leftover rolls from inside the mesh from that prior wreath to create these. It's super simple. I just took this Dollar Tree wrapping paper that looked like a candy cane or peppermint. I cut a piece that was wide enough to wrap around the tube as well as long enough to have it fit exactly. Just used some tape to tape both ends to make sure that the wrapping paper wasn't gonna fall off on me. And then I followed a similar process but cut a piece just wider than my peppermint roll to do the outside cellophane. If you can't find cellophane at Dollar Tree, you could also use like a plastic wrap. It's not gonna look exactly the same, but if you can't find this, that is an alternative. My last step was to tape down my cellophane so it didn't move. I'm just making sure to use glossy tape and then twist and tie the ends with some baker's twine. I trimmed everything down and they were ready to go and I had six of these cute little peppermints. These are great for tiered trays. You could also just set them on a branch like I'm showing here and they are super fun and festive and I really liked that I was able to reuse those little inner pieces of the mesh and get another DIY out of those. Another thing I got tons of questions about were these cute little coffee cups. Now I was inspired by some Christmas little cups that looked just like this on TikTok. I made a fall version and so I knew that when Christmas rolled around I wanted to make the Christmas version. So I grabbed some of these Dollar Tree Red Solo Cup like shot glass sized cups and then some Dollar Tree spackling. I added just a splash of water like we're talking a tablespoon and then a squirt of white paint. So many of you suggested to use the white paint and you were so right, it makes it a lot more vibrant. I'm gonna stir it up till I get a consistency that is similar to whipped cream. It's gonna be a thicker whipped cream, but you're gonna be able to tell, okay, this feels right. And then when that's ready, we're gonna prep for an ornament. So you can make these as regular cups, ornaments, garlands, there's a ton of different options. So I'm taking a cup with some gel super glue, also from Dollar Tree, and just sticking some glue on the edge. Then I'm taking a tied loop of some baker's twine and gluing it to the side of the cup so that I have a hanger. And then I'm throwing in just a Dollar Tree ping pong ball to allow for the spackling when I'm putting it over the top to not fall into the cup. I also wanted to test a, another method. So for this one, I just used some uncooked rice and put it in the bottom of the cup for some weight. My idea here is that I was gonna make a garland and what I wish I would have done is filled them up fully with rice for some more weight, but I decided to do half rice and then half cut up like plastic bag, which you'll see in a second, and that wasn't enough weight. I also took these Dollar Tree candy cane straws I found in the party section and cut them to size. 
So then once all my cups were prepped, then I took my mixture with the spoon and put it into just a regular Ziploc bag. I want to get it into one of the corners as best as I can so it doesn't all get stuck on the side of the bag as I'm squirting it out. Then I took my scissors and just cut a zigzag pattern in the end of the bag to make a full piping bag. If you've got a piping bag or one of the Dollar Tree ones, you can use that too, but I just use a regular bag. I'm either going over the top of the ping pong ball or the target bag to pipe on some of this full whipped cream. I'm just going in a circle and building as I go. And then while it's wet, I'm sticking in a piece of that straw that I cut up as well as sprinkling on just a little bit of cinnamon on the top. You could do whatever you want, sprinkles, there's a ton of different options. I just like the smell of cinnamon and I like this look. There's a lot of red going on already, so I didn't add too many sprinkles. I did a couple of sprinkles as you can see here, but they were a little too heavy and they sunk into the spackling, so just keep that in mind. So once they were dry, I was ready to hang up my ornaments and display my little cups wherever I wanted. And of course you guys know me, you know the saying about people that like to bedazzle things where like if it's not moving, it will be bedazzled. That's the same with me with garlands. If it's not moving, I'm gonna try to turn it into a garland. So I made some extras of these cups and I used my dowel needle and just some regular twine. This is from the automotive section at Dollar Tree. I decided to string up with my twine some of my little coffee cups as well as some straws to give it some color and some unfinished wood beads. So the process wasn't too hard. I just took my dowel needle and kind of twisted it to pop a hole in the cup. What I would suggest in the future is putting the hole in the cup before you do the spackling on the top. So before you do anything, put the hole on top because it ended up popping off my full whipped cream. I just used some super glue to stick it back on, but it would have been so much easier. Then I used a mixture of those little straw pieces as well as the beads to create spacers and some of the tops, as you can see here, just fully popped off, but I was able to rehook them pretty easily with some super glue. So I wasn't too worried, but again, it would make it a lot easier if you just pop the holes through before you do anything. Once I put everything on there, I thought, woohoo, this is going to be a really great garland. I went to pick it up and they all fell over. So what I learned is that the half rice, half bag trick is not heavy enough. So I would try, if you want to do this, a whole thing of rice and popping the holes through the sides of your cups before you put the spackling on. But I'm not sad about it. I really like how this looks on my little dollar spot tray from Target. And so I think I'm going to display them like this near our coffee bar and it still looks like a garland, it's just not gonna be hung. So you guys loved my fall palette signs and so I wanted to show you a really easy way that you could make a snowflake palette sign using these Dollar Tree snowflakes. Now, if you don't have pallet wood, no worries. You could get regular wood somewhere else. You could also stack some foam board or some Dollar Tree signs, whatever base you are comfortable making, you could use the same concept. I'm taking three pieces of the wood and then I'm using some of this extra wood that was broken to create some faux braces on the back. If you don't have pieces like this, just cut a piece to the width of the back of your sign. You're just wanting to have these pieces of wood cover all the different pieces and it's going to hold it together so you've got one sign. You can also use a hammer and nail. You don't have to have a nail gun. We just have this and it makes things a lot quicker. Then I laid out my three MDF kind of chipboard snowflakes as well as a pack of the smaller wood ornaments and then once I knew I had enough then I went through with the white spray paint and spray painted all of them. I also made sure to cover the holes in the larger snowflakes. I just did that with some wood filler. Once everything was dry I got it all arranged how I wanted and the chipboard kind of cardboard whatever we want to call it snowflakes they went on with the nail gun beautifully. My smaller ones, the nail gun did not want to adhere them. So instead of using the nail gun, I just grabbed some of my Gorilla wood glue. You can get this super cheap at Walmart. And I added that to the back and then used the wood glue to hook it to the side. When I'm using this wood glue, I like to use these DeWalt clamps, which I will also link, but you could use whatever you have. You could put some like paint or stain can on top of it. Just you want to make sure that you've got enough weight so it adheres to the sign. And then once it was all dry, I had this really pretty sign with the snowflakes falling. This could be in your house or outside if you want this to be a porch sign. I would suggest sealing it with some polycrylic or polyurethane for outside. And I wouldn't put it anywhere where it's going to get direct rain or snow on it. 
and these are such a great way to kind of dress up some cheap wood or scrap wood for a couple bucks. Can't go wrong. Be sure to hit subscribe down below if you're new so you don't miss the future Christmas videos I will have coming your way. It is gonna be a Christmas bonanza from now until December. So look forward to that and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.